Aswat is believed to be the mastermind of all the bombings in London. From on the 7-7 and 7-21, this is the guy, we think. This is the guy, and what's really embarrassing is that you, the entire British police are out chasing him, and one wing of the British government, MI6, or the British Secret Service, right. has been hiding him. And this has been a real source of contention between CIA, Hold on, John. Justice Department, and Britain. MI6 has been hiding him. Are you saying that he has been working for them? Oh, I'm not saying it. This is what the Muslim sheikh said in an interview in a British newspaper back in 2001. So he's a double agent, or what? He's a double agent. He yeah, working for the, so he's working for the Brits to try to give them information about Al-Qaeda, but in reality, he's still an Al-Qaeda operative. Yeah. The CIA and the Israelis all accused MI6 of letting all these terrorists live in London, uh, not because they were getting Al-Qaeda information, but for appeasement. It was one of those, you leave us alone, we leave you alone kind of things. Well, we left him so alone the, too long then. Absolutely. Now, we knew about this guy, Aswat. Back in 1999, he came to America. The Justice Department wanted to indict him in Seattle because him and his buddy were trying to set up a terrorist training school in Oregon. So they indicted That's the buddy, right? But why didn't they indict him? Well, it comes out, we've just learned that the headquarters of the U.S. Justice Department ordered the Seattle prosecutors not to touch Aswat. Hello. Now, hold on. Why? And that's... Well, apparently, Aswat was working for British intelligence. Now, Aswat's boss, the one-armed Captain Hook, he gets indicted two years later. So the guy above him and below him get indicted, but not Aswat. Now, there's a split of opinion within U.S. intelligence. Some people say that the British intelligence fibbed to us. They told us that Aswat was dead. And that's why the New York group dropped the case. That's not what most of the Justice Department thinks. They think that it was just, again, covering up for this very publicly affiliated guy with al Mujaru. He was a mm -hmm. British intelligence plant. So all of a sudden, he disappears. He's in South Africa. We think he's dead. We don't know he's down there. Last month, the South African Secret Service come across the guy. Yeah, now the CIA he's says, alive. oh, he's alive. Our CIA says, uh, okay, let's arrest him. But the Brits say no again? The Brits say no. Now, the, at this point... Two weeks ago, the Brits know that the CIA wants to get a hold of Haroun. So what happens? He takes off again. Goes right to London. He isn't arrested when he lands. He isn't arrested when he leaves. Even though he's on a watch list. He's on a watch list. The only reason he could get away with that was if he was working for British intelligence. He wow. was a wanted man. And then takes off the day before the bombings, as I understand it. Yeah, and goes to Pakistan. The Pakistan, Pakistan is arrested. They jail him. They jail him. He's released within 24 hours, back to southern Africa, goes through Zimbabwe, and is arrested in Zambia. Trying to now the U.S., wow. the U.S., we're trying to get our hands on this guy. John, hang around. <laughs> I have so many questions now. Oh, this is a bad here. one.